In this video, we will discuss modeling tailings dam failures and how to do this using modern inundation modeling techniques with non Newtonian fluids. CC Hydrodynamics is a specialist modeling company orientated towards inundation and hydraulic modeling. We do a lot of work with dam failure inundation assessments and flood risk assessments and work both within and outside of the UK. We differentiate ourselves by making use of big data, automation to undertake large portfolios of work, and then using modern GIS and web-based mapping platforms to produce easy to understand mapping for our clients. Recently, the International Council on Mining and Metals and the UN Environment Programme collaboratively developed the new Global Industry Standards on Tailings Management, or GISTM. A core new requirement of these standards is that owners investigate and understand the risk that their assets pose on downstream communities. Risk is a combination of both probability and hazard. Therefore, it is a requirement of the standards for owners to undertake detailed inundation modelling of areas downstream from their tailings dams. In this video, we will discuss key issues with modeling mud flows, dry day failure models, wet day failure models, and consequence assessments. Generally, when tailings dams fail, they contain such a high concentration of sediment that they do not act like water. As such, these should be modelled as non-Newtonian flows. There are four key parameters in dry day models, and there are eight key parameters in wet day models. Additionally, when flow interacts with large watercourses, this reduces the sediment concentration and can affect the properties of the tailings flow. And finally, there's considerable uncertainty in all of these mentioned parameters and mechanisms. This graphic shows the impact of differing values of yield stress and viscosity for an example failure. Clearly, this makes a significant impact to the inundated area, and hence a wide array of parameters should be included when undertaking inundation models. It is best, if possible, to undertake a multivariate approach. For dry day failures, the yield stress, the viscosity, and the density of the release tailing should be varied over a parameter domain space within ranges of expected values. Additionally, if there is a risk of interacting with a large watercourse, mixing of the tailings should be considered since the river water may further mobilize the debris flow. This should be done over a large number of simulations and the result can then be mapped both in terms of depth, velocity, etc., but also as probability. For example, if you have a known property distribution for some parameters and you model a wide domain space, you can create probabilistic mapping such as this. This example is of a deep soil landslide in Iceland. This helps highlight where could be impacted by the flow with some measure of the likelihood that it is even impacted. This level of detail is likely required for detailed consequence calculations for portfolio risk assessments. Wet day failure models have the same uncertainties as dry day failure models, though this time including the effect of mixing with floodwaters. Again, the yield stress, the viscosity and the density should be considered. And additionally, it might be that the dam should be modelled as failing during a range of different flood events. And since the model makes heavy use of mixing with floodwaters, and especially where a dam contains a large amount of very toxic material, the concentration of particular chemicals or properties should also be included. Again, this should really be modelled over a domain space, and this can also be used to generate probabilistic mapping. This example shows a tailings flow mixing with natural watercourses. With these models, the fresh flood water erodes new paths in the deposited materials, and the tailings forms beaches of deposited materials along its flow path. This is particularly visible in the valley where the tailings interact with the large watercourse. Note also that this results in the elevation of natural floodwaters upstream as the tailings blocks the valley, leading to potentially increased consequences elsewhere and not just areas impacted directly by the tailings flow. The 
The way in which the tailings mixes with the floodwaters depends on the material parameters. On the left we show a thinner, less concentrated tailings flow which does not form beaches and is easily washed away, whereas on the right we show a thicker, more concentrated tailings flow which does cause beaches and blockages. This highlights the importance of considering the uncertainty in the material parameters. The Reclamation Consequence Estimating Methodology, or RCEM, is a useful guide for calculating consequences in the event of dam failures. It uses depth velocity product, or DV, as the main variable. However, it only relates to water dams in its current form. Additionally, it uses empirical data from known events, but summarizes only approximate DV values for each event based on a broader hydraulic model. It simplifies the treatment of affected populations, not separating those that are sheltering from those that are directly exposed. And because of the way that the DV values are determined, it is not point application appropriate. This means it is limited when being coupled with a detailed hydrodynamic model of any inundation zone. It would need to be significantly modified before it could be used with tailings type flows, and furthermore, it cannot account for other types of harm such as toxicity and chemical injuries and fatalities. When undertaking detailed consequence modelling, this image summarises the key issue with the RCEM guide. It treats populations who are effectively sheltering, such as those shown on the balcony, in the same way as those that are exposed, such as those that are stuck in vehicles. It also makes assumptions about warning times, which might not be an accurate reflection of population behaviour downstream of tailings dams. Agent-based models are relatively new. They function by modelling individuals in the area and it allows them to evacuate in simulated time down specified routes. They are exceptionally useful for evacuation planning since they can highlight routes and safe zones that are inappropriate. However, they do make many assumptions about the populations downstream. And they rely on a lot of information which might not be available, or they need to be run many thousands of times to account for the wide variability in population behaviours to form estimates of loss of life accurately. Again, these models need to be amended for tailings type flows, and they cannot account for other types of injury or damage that might be expected in some cases. We have developed an alternative consequence model which is based on statistical fragility. This was primarily to address the major shortcomings of the two previously mentioned modelling techniques. We use data from a detailed post-tsunami survey to look at load on structures and buildings. We use a multi-class fragility building damage model based upon this data. This accounts for uncertainty. The fatality rates for sheltering populations are then driven by the survivability of the shelter itself, which is a shortcoming of the RCEM method. We also account for pedestrian stability, taking into account generalised variability in heights, weights and ages. And we also model vehicle occupant behaviour and vehicle stability using fragility curves. The derived method is point application appropriate given its formulation and it is easily modified to account for different types of harm. This table contains a summary of the key pros and cons of each method. Thank you for listening and watching. Please get in touch with us if you would like to know more about the modelling technologies shown in this presentation.